Hi, and welcome to the Trinity Belt Show. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Maina Shege. Now, this week on the show, we focus on matters, rates, and real estate. I'll be speaking to Raghav Gandhi, who is the Managing Director at Acorn Investment Management Limited, and of course, the conference chair of the rates conference that is coming up. Now, let's take a look at his profile and then get into the conversation. Raghav is a proven real estate and investment professional with a track record of delivering results globally across the value chain and across asset classes, combined with substantial experience in investment management, structuring and private equity transactions. His energetic leadership approach has led to the ability to build and manage successful cross-functional teams across different cultures. He jointly led the growth of a major commercial real estate startup venture in India, building it into a hundred million dollars company in less than six years and also raised 500 million dollars for a developer in private equity funding he has also headed the development of projects across MENA region for a major real estate developer in Kuwait and was responsible for the optimizing returns from a number of underperforming investments he sought to establish a startup venture focused on the provision of purpose-built student accommodation in India, while at the same time managing a proprietary consulting practice focused on development and investment advisory services with a broad geographic focus, including emerging markets and in the UK. Most recently, he spearheaded investment and activities for Acon Holdings, a leading Kenya real estate developer focused on the provision of rental housing, having successfully launched Africa's first two student accommodation rates in February 2021. As part of his role as the managing director of the rate management firm, he was instrumental in the raising of over $100 million in equity and debt capital from foreign and local institutional investors. Raga, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to see you again. And I can see you are really gearing up for something coming up. But first, before we even talk about that, sure. I want to sit in the seat of viewers who probably would be interacting with you for the first time when we talk about matters, real estate, uh, rates and all that. And I would want you to really by start by basic definitives. And let's talk about rates and okay. what are they? Right. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah sure. Mm. So REITs are real estate investment trusts. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, these are asset vehicles or investment structures that hold real estate assets, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Uh, what they then enable is for external investors, third party investors, mm -hmm. to come in mm -hmm. and essentially take a stake in those uh, investment vehicles, Okay. right? Yeah. Uh, so essentially it's like you could say it's a corporation, Okay. but, uh, and, and you know, like someone buying shares mm -hmm. in a company like a bank or a telecommunications firm, mm -hmm. Except in this case, it's structured as a trust mm -hmm. that enables investors to come in and subscribe units in that trust. Oh, great. So that means because of the brick of the units, you can come in with as little as not really building a whole building for yourself, right? Exactly. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah. That's the beauty of REITs. Okay. Uh, it enables the democratization mm -hmm. of real estate okay. because you don't have to then spend a billion shillings or a billion and a half shillings to buy a whole building, mm -hmm. what you can do is, you know, spend, let's say, a thousand shillings mm -hmm. or two thousand shillings mm -hmm. and buy a stake yeah. within mm -hmm. a REIT, mm -hmm. but still be able to say, hey, I'm invested in that building because that building is probably part of your wow. REIT. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure just for the sake of building context and that, now that our viewers know what a REIT is, one would ask, which ones exist? I think you could mention one or two so that at least people can understand them more. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, well, in Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, we actually have now four REITs mm -hmm. uh, currently. Yeah. Um, uh, the first one that was launched was the Ilam Fahari I REIT. Yeah. Subsequently, we had two REITs uh, mm -hmm. launched by Acorn, yeah. which are two REITs focused on student accommodation. Yeah. Um, and then lately, mm -hmm. um, uh, we had uh, CPFs. Uh, uh, REIT come into the market, which was, I think, towards the end of last year. Okay, great. There you have it with the examples now. Let's talk about the structure and why, from your perspectives, this is a better alternative to investing in real estate. What do you normally tell people when they ask that question? I think, look, there is a bunch of benefits and advantages uh, to investing in real estate yeah. through a REIT, mm -hmm. okay? Um, historically, um, real estate uh, has been a sector that typically, you know, uh, it's for high net worth individuals, mm -hmm. corporations, mm -hmm. um, and for the ordinary, 
you know, Joe to be able to participate can yeah. be a little bit of challenging mm -hmm. because it is so capital intensive. There yeah. are large tickets that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, and then what you also tend to have is that when sometimes folks do invest, they get embroiled in schemes, you know, that are, don't work out, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The benefit that we have with REITs is that they are regulated vehicles. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So they are giving you the chance mm -hmm. to participate in a uh, asset or capital intensive sector mm -hmm. uh, by investing very little, yeah. but also through, uh, you know, uh, regulated, through regulations that are in place, mm -hmm. through the regulatory authority. Yeah. In our case, that's the Capital Markets Authority of Kenya. Yeah. And of course, as a result of them being regulated, um, uh, there's usually high standards of corporate governance oh, that are adhered to, yeah. right? Yeah. Where you typically have boards, investment committees, so you know that things are being conducted in the way that they should. Okay. okay? The other thing I would add is mm -hmm. that because REITs are essentially portfolios, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Instead of you having single asset exposure, mm -hmm. like say, you know, if you had a building all to yourself, yeah. uh, you would be prone to the vagaries of the market that that asset is in, right? Mm -hmm. That building is in. Mm -hmm. However, by being invested in a portfolio as an investor, you are then able to diversify your risks. Oh. And that's extremely important. Then yeah. you don't have single asset exposure, you have multi-asset exposure. Yeah. Those multi-assets are in different markets. So if something goes wrong in one market, it doesn't necessarily impact the other, the other markets you're right. and the other assets. Yeah, which is safe for your money. And by the regulator, this you mean the Capital Markets Authority, right? That's right. Excellent. Now, let's talk about, uh, because there has been conversation, especially uh, with even our current government, about housing and matters. On, and this is part of the, you know, your purview when it comes to matters rates. Sure. I wanted to understand from your perspective, when you look at Kenya, for example, uh, what is the state, if someone was to ask you, what's the state of real estate right now in the country? Mm. Do we have opportunities that we need to tap into that you see? Yeah, look, I mean, you know, to me, there are always opportunities okay. in, within real estate, particularly in Kenya. It's an emerging market, it's a frontier market. There's so much growth potential yeah. uh, that, you know, real estate can either be a product of that growth or an enabler of mm -hmm. that growth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's where the opportunities lie. Typically, the way I like to look at real estate is that you break it up into the different mm -hmm. subsectors. Yeah. So you have residential real estate, you have office real estate, you have retail real estate, and you have you know, some other types of now new asset classes like industrial real estate mm -hmm. and so forth, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So each asset or subsector needs to be looked at it for its own kind yeah. of uh, strength and potential, say, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look at residential, because you did mention about affordable housing, yeah. um, as the government has highlighted, you know, as part of its uh, agenda, yeah. there is a dearth of affordable housing mm -hmm. in the country, yeah. and that points to uh, opportunities for private firms um, to be able to provide affordable housing to the market and mm -hmm. because there are that many people that need to be housed. Yeah. With increased urbanization taking place, with the migration from rural areas into cities such as Nairobi yeah. and others in Kenya, you are gonna need to provide more housing yeah. so that those people can dwell and be able to then go to their work and earn a living and therefore up you know, the state of the economy and their own standard of living as well. Okay. Right? okay. Um, if we look at offices, mm -hmm. of course, since COVID, mm -hmm. uh, there has been a little bit of a shakeup yeah. in the office space, which mm -hmm. everyone's aware of. Yeah. You know, um, for the last two years, uh, folks have been talking about uh, working okay, from, from home, home. <laughs> right? Yeah. But actually, I'm yeah. a firm believer that um, that you know that is not a long-term sustainable solution. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of benefits yeah. from people working together. You know, in, uh, I, I'm a student of economics mm -hmm. uh, previously. I well, was not a very good student, but oh. I was a student nevertheless. <laughs> but, you know, we used to learn something about clustering, mm -hmm. right? A clustering effect yeah. where markets would develop 
like where companies would congregate together mm -hmm. so they would be in the same area yeah. because that would enable then information sharing, mm -hmm. knowledge sharing, more innovation happening. Okay. And I think an office kind of serves the same purpose. Right. When you have people together as opposed to, you know, someone's working from their home in Lavington, someone's working from their home in, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Antica Road. Yeah. When you have people getting together, there's a lot more ideation that takes place, teamwork, and speed. enhances productivity, Absolutely. exactly. Yeah. So I think that's why I believe that going forward, you might see a reversion mm -hmm. to the office space, okay. right? Okay. Um, I don't think it's gonna be the old school form of working. Mm -hmm. I think there, you know, it's, it's what is being referred to as hybrid, okay. where there's gonna be a bit of splitting of time okay. to make sure that people can be as productive as possible. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think you're gonna see the return of the office space. But I think again, within that high quality office space, because I think a lot of the companies that are now coming into Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, the multinational, the global companies, yeah. they have certain standards that they want to see You're in right. their office space. You're right. And I think that's what developers have to have to offer. Okay. And we can continue talking to I know, you know I know. Yeah. I know you could do a thesis yeah. on this. Yeah. Uh, but before we get into the challenges of uptics when you talk about, you know, rates and the real estate in general. Yes. I am curious to know their conversations. We just had the Africa Climate Summit the other day yes. and these conversations about ensuring that even in our developments we are embracing green technology and all that. 100%. And of course, people who are developers who could be watching today, they, they may want to as well ensure that they are not branded as people who are anti-climate or anti-planet. Right, right. What are these things that are happening in the industry to yeah. ensure that we are walking the green path? Yeah, and look, you know, it's a very fair point because actually yeah. um, studies have shown that, um, you know, um, uh, construction yeah. and real estate, mm -hmm. uh, so not just even only when a building is being constructed, but yeah. once it is constructed and operational, mm -hmm. bi uh, buildings themselves are significant consumers of yeah. greenhouse gas oh. em emissions, right? Yeah. Or maybe not consumers, but actual, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, uh, producers, producers of greenhouse yes, yes. Uh, gas emissions. Mm -hmm. So as an industry, we very much have to be responsible mm -hmm. for that impact mm -hmm. and what we can do to minimize that impact, okay. right? And that's why you are increasingly seeing a lot of eyeballs within real estate mm -hmm. on how we can do things better, mm -hmm. you know, through the use of um, recycling or recyclable uh, materials yeah. in construction, mm -hmm. you know, rather than always kind of um, uh, getting, getting new, getting new, so. yeah. uh, getting new raw materials. Mm -hmm. um, also, the use of alternative energy sources, solar yeah. panels. Mm -hmm. You know, how can we minimize the consumption of water yeah. in the buildings? You know, from the taps that we use. Mm -hmm. You know, going to that level of detail. Okay. Uh, looking at how electricity is consumed as well. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, can we u minimize the wattage that yeah. uh, the appliances? Uh, utilize mm -hmm. when they are in use. So it's it's all these areas that we have to be cognizant of and and be mindful of so that we can minimize our impact uh, in uh, in the in the climate no. which I, I think you know as an as an industry mm -hmm. as a sector yeah there's a significant shift mm -hmm. in the mindset that is happening and I'm glad to see that absolutely and of course those are tips for you the developer <laughs> so make sure you can uh, probably as well join into a conversation he's going to talk about about why you need to get there and get more tips as well let's talk about the challenges now that are you know because we keep saying you know what we have the opportunities we have the potential and all that What's the industry facing and looking at it and saying these are headwinds for us? Mm. Yeah. Well, I think the headwinds right now uh, are not just being faced by real estate. I think it's across the board. You know, mm. the the there are economic challenges, um, uh, particularly with respect to the high interest rate environment that we're facing. Yeah. And interest rates, um, you know, are very much tied with uh, uh, real estate. You're right? right because. Mm. Uh, a lot of times people have to borrow in order to be able to fund the acquisition of real estate. Absolutely. If the cost of financing is higher, that limits the amount that they can borrow and mm -hmm. then what they can afford, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, is a challenge. People are also spending less, um, you know, uh, disposable income is reducing mm -hmm. uh, generally. So um, 
you know, it, it's it's not a, it's not an easy time. Uh, yeah. People are kind of keeping a control of their purse strings. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I think if we believe in the fundamentals of the economy, yeah. um, we cannot say that this is a problem that's going to be there forever. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd all give up and just go home and just sit there and do nothing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, uh, I, I do believe that uh, Kenya is a major economy within East Africa. Mm -hmm. um, there are strong fundamentals here in mm -hmm. terms of the economic drivers. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why you still see uh, uh, companies and sectors that are growing out here. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, we just have to kind of uh, see this period out. Um, yeah. But, you know, as with anyone in business, um, anyone in the professional space, what you also realize that is that it's in the tough times, those who can stick it out, yeah. that's when the opportunities present themselves. Wow. Right? Okay. Let's talk about your role now, uh, because the, you have brought back after three year hiatus the rates on your conference it's coming in uh, i don't know which month you'll give us all those details uh, and of course the agenda and what you seek to have uh, for the people who be who be interested in coming yeah. yeah by the way i was actually corrected yesterday apparently it's a yeah. five-year hiatus it's five. Oh, yeah it's so not three. Uh, i uh, <laughs> i was corrected because I, I i said something okay uh, erroneously uh, <laughs> on social media uh, oh. uh, in terms of the number of years so you know the it has been a five-year gap. Of course, the gap, we had this COVID. kind of bug that went around that yes, kind of stopped us from actually <laughs> hanging out together. Yeah. So that, that explains a large part of it. Um, but I think we felt this year we were going to be able to come back in mm -hmm. uh, all because we're seeing so much interest. Yeah. Um, so many potential issuances, you know, so, so many potential issuers that are interested in um, uh, kind of coming in with their own REIT, mm -hmm. that we're building that momentum that I think is important that we now have this forum again, yeah. where people can share ideas, share learnings, mm -hmm. and we are able to help with the growth of the, uh, uh, of the sector, of the REIT sector. Okay. In, sorry. No, no, go no, ahead, go ahead. What yeah. I was going to say is in terms of, you know, your question about what is the agenda. Absolutely. We actually have an agenda that we're already working on. Mm -hmm. um, the the premise, the fundamental principle that we try to follow mm -hmm. is bringing in international expertise mm -hmm. by bringing in like best practice practitioners yeah. and complementing that with the local market context. Uh -huh. So it's going to be a fascinating and very interesting and very knowledgeable program mm -hmm. that we're putting together mm -hmm. where uh, we're going to have some really high quality speakers from both overseas yeah. and from Kenya, mm -hmm. um, you know, sharing their expertise and their experiences. Okay, great. Yeah. I'm sure the next follow-up question for anybody watching will be, okay, how do I then get enrolled so that I can attend? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. look, mm -hmm. so the, the, the conference uh, has been organized or is being organized by the REITs Association of Kenya, okay. RAK. Yeah. So if you go on their website, you yeah. will find all the details. All right. Actually, we've got early bird tickets out right oh, now. Okay. So uh, <laughs> the, the program is out. Yeah. Um, the, the website uh, is rak.or.ke. Yeah. Um, you'll find details where the venue is, what mm -hmm. the dates are. Um, yeah. We're going to be hosting it from uh, the 31st of October to 2nd mm -hmm. of November. Yeah. Uh, it's taking place in, in Ashipai. Okay. Um, you know, I think it's going to be it's going to be a very high quality event. Amazing. And of course, we want just to put this poster running now on the screen. Just check it out for details. And of course, check their social media handles as well, as he has said. Let's talk about the people who will be there, the investors and the issuers. Is there any other expectations other than just this, the amazing speakers that you've spoken about? Uh, it's a great question. Yeah, we are actually getting coverage from all relevant stakeholders. Wow. So we're going to have not just investors, not just issuers, yeah. but we're going to have all the other service providers okay. that anyone would need to speak to yeah. in order to be able to launch their own REIT. So that includes transaction advisors, that includes the banks, yeah. that includes uh, valuers, okay. right? That mm -hmm. includes um, uh, structural engineers, you know, uh, project certifiers. Mm -hmm. So it's a full slew of uh, attendees. Okay. So that, you know, it's going to be a very engaging atmosphere, very engaging conversations mm -hmm. where people can learn as much as possible about what it takes to uh, launch a REIT. Okay. And, um, you know, I think that is where the value will be for anyone who's attending. Absolutely. And I think you have your takeouts of what exactly will be happening after that conference. As we come to the end of this conversation, 
earlier we started by the simple definitives of rates and all that. And of course, one of the key follow-ups that would have been there for anyone is, if I feel like I want to buy a few units here and there, True. where do I start? Maybe that could be a question, maybe. How do you answer that? <laughs> well, I think uh, each, uh, you know, we spoke about some of the REITs. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 and, and, and each one has a different basis of okay. coming in. Yeah. Um, um, of course, you can uh, trade through the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Absolutely. Uh, that is very much available. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, you know, for the Acorn REITs, uh, if you're an individual, uh, then you can come through a retail aggregator platform called VUCA. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, you know, um, a lot of our investors come through uh, uh, come as institutional investors, pension funds. Okay. And so there's a sometimes a different process that needs to be followed. Okay. But in terms of a couple of the reads, they're mm -hmm. available on the NSE platform. Thank you, Raghav. I want to ask you about what I would call the, the meat of the matter, where people sometimes view real estate as something unaffordable, completely mm -hmm. yeah. for a certain cluster of people. But I want you to address from your perspective, because you interact with people, investors and all that. Yeah. Let's talk about affordability. Yeah. What do you see happening in the industry or in the future that yeah. would make this a thing of everybody? I, I look, it's, it's a fantastic question and I think you know, as real estate practitioners, it's something we all have to think about and we all have to take responsibility for. Yeah, right. um, anyone who says, oh, real estate, you know, it's so expensive or I can't afford it, in a way they're 100% right, right? Mm -hmm. Buying an apartment or buying a house yeah. is a heavy ticket item. It it's, is. Not, it's not like going out there and buying a bottle of water. It, it, it requires you to have savings. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you have to, be, uh, you have to borrow and when you borrow, you're borrowing at high interest rates, yeah. which makes it all, when you put it together, it you know sometimes limits the affordability for the everyday person, yeah. right? such yeah. as us. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why as an, a sector, as mm -hmm. an industry, and as organizations, we need to look at affordable housing slightly differently. You're right. I uh, am a firm believer mm -hmm. that there is a strong or, or, or a, a significant space in the market mm -hmm for not offering real estate on a sale basis. Okay. I shouldn't have to, as an organization, let's say, mm -hmm. I shouldn't have to uh, go to you and say, you must buy this you real must estate. Buy the full unit. As yeah. an organization, I should be able to put together a capital structure mm -hmm. where I can go to you mm -hmm. and say, hey, Mina, would you like to rent Oh, this apartment from me, okay. right? Mm -hmm. If we look at the World Bank mm -hmm. and even uh, UN, they've mm -hmm. conducted a number of studies where they say affordability mm -hmm. is typically categorized or defined as 30% of someone's income, ah, right? Okay. So you have to then look at product offerings, mm -hmm. solutions mm -hmm. that enable mm -hmm. someone to be able to afford within that 30% you know, um, limit mm -hmm. of their income. And typically what you find yeah. uh, is that the way to do that is by renting yeah. uh, housing. And okay. it actually, you know, sometimes we get stuck in this notion that we have to be able to buy, buy. a house or buy an apartment, you know, because it gives us some security. There's an emotional connect. If you look at a lot of developed markets, Germany, for instance, 70% mm -hmm. of the population rents. Yeah. Right. They still feel secure. Wow. So it's a lot to do with also shifting our mindset as mm. to how we think about housing. All right. I want to give you a final word to the viewers. You can choose whether you're going to give your final word based on the conference or anything else that you've spoken about. So please go ahead. No, no I, look, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, it's a pleasure. Mm -hmm. You know, as, a, as an association, as mm -hmm. the REITs Association of Kenya, we're working very hard yeah. to put together a very high quality, high standard event. Um, I think it's going to give people the opportunity to uh, learn so much about the sector and why they should be part, taking part in the sector, especially if they're interested uh, issuers. Um, you know, we, uh, as an association, we've also uh, launched a REIT toolkit program where mm -hmm. we've tried to really uh, make the launching of REITs as simplified as possible. We've actually provided template documents mm -hmm. that you can just like literally copy and paste. Okay. Um, and all that is something that you'll be able to learn from uh, by attending the conference. So we hope that uh, people will attend um, and uh, you know, make for a very high quality 
uh, event uh, coming towards the end of the year. It's going to be probably one of the last events yeah. for uh, investors to take part in. So we look forward to them being there. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Raghav, for that. And of course, thank you so much for your time once again. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Great. Raghav Gandhi, and he's quite optimistic that, listen, uh, there's something for everybody in this particular industry, whether you're renting, owning the property or anything else. But I, love, I like his perspective that, listen, you have a place in all this particular sector. Looking forward, and I hope you'll make a date with the conference. He has elaborated about it and what are your takeouts there. Uh, so make sure at least you book in. Uh, reach out to them on their social media handles as well and make your date. Thank you so much. The conference chair has spoken. I leave you now with the market.